So good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Online with St. James. Great that you're watching, catching up with us on this Sunday. We hope you're having a great day. Um, we, this, uh, this Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. So we're starting a new uh, Christian uh, year. Uh, this is the first Sunday of the, of the Christian calendar. Uh, Advent, of course, looking forward to Christmas, but also looking forward to the second coming. And I'll, I'll be saying more about that in the sermon a bit later on. Just before we begin, a few notices to make sure that you're updated on, on the many, many things that happen uh, at St. James. Uh, the first notice to say is that we have a posada, which is a traveling nativity. If you've been around St. James for longer, you'll know uh, about the posada. So it's a, a nativity, a scene with, with the characters of the nativity. Let me just read a bit uh, about where this tradition comes for, from. Posada is the Spanish word which means in and is also the title of a Mexican Advent celebration in which two young people dressed as Mary and Joseph traveled from house to house in their village to proclaim the imminent arrival of Jesus and request that the newborn baby be given a room. The idea has been updated so that nativity figures travel around the parish from place to place, staying at a different house every night and finally taking their place in the church crib on Christmas Eve, ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas Day. So we have one of these nativities at St. James, one of these sets of the characters of the Christmas story. And this, this traveling nativity travels around from home to home uh, and people can sign up to have the, the, the posada in their house for one or more nights. And the idea is that uh, someone brings it to your house and that you have it at your house for one day or for multiple days. And then you bring it on to the next person who has uh, signed up. And when you meet together to hand over the posada, you could, uh, you could share some hospitality, you could have, have, a, have a drink together. You can say a short prayer together, which is uh, it, part of the, the posada package. And it is a, it's a wonderful way to share uh, this Advent season together as a church community. So please do sign up for that. Uh, and please share uh, in being a church family by having this, this posada in your house. Uh, the way to sign up is to go to the, uh, the church, the weekly email, uh, and to click on the link to sign up for the posada or, or to speak to Diana. Send an email to office at stjames.nl and they'll sign you up and uh, you can see what date works for you. Uh, and uh, that's a great way to engage in community this Advent. Uh, then the next thing to say is that uh, tonight, uh, at the, on this first Sunday of Advent, tonight we are having the Advent Carol service. So the Advent Carol service is an ecumenical service that we do together with the Dutch-speaking churches in Voorschoten. The, the Voorschoten Council of Churches organizes that and St. James is a member. Uh, which means it's a, it is a service of readings and carols, like a usual carol service, but the theme is Advent, so the readings are Advent, the carols are Advent. Uh, some of the readings and some of the music will be in English, some of it obviously in Dutch, for the Dutch churches, uh, but you are very welcome to join in uh, with that service, to, to come and attend that. That will be tonight at 7 p.m. in the Laurentius Kerk, which is the big Roman Catholic church, next to the Bondsgebouw, where we sometimes meet. That's on the Leidseweg number 102 in Voorschoten. And the music will be provided uh, by the Leidse Kantorij Choir. And they're an excellent choir, and they'll be leading uh, the, Christ the, the Advent anthems and, and much of the other uh, singing as well. So if you can come along to that, uh, then you are very warmly invited. Next to say that Christmas is coming up quickly, and uh, every Christmas we have many different services, uh, services of all different kinds. So we have a Christingle service uh, in which the, uh, the Christmas Carol Club of the British School participates. Uh, we have services on Christmas Eve uh, for the family, but also a midnight communion. We have service on Christmas Day. So we have all kinds of services, uh, as you can see here up on the slide. What's important to note is that all these services are at different times and very importantly at different venues. Uh, the, the British School is not all, uh, available throughout the, the, the Christmas holidays. So that means we find other venues like the Bondsgebouw, but also like the Dorpskerk, which is the church in the center of Voorschoten, uh, right uh, over my shoulder here behind us. Uh, so please take note of those, uh, take note of those different venues, those different times, and do come along to those Christmas services if you can. And also perhaps why don't you invite 
some friends along. Christmas is a great time to invite friends to come along to church. Uh, the Christingle service on the 11th of December is a great service for uh, families with children to come along to, as is the service on Christmas Eve at four o'clock. Uh, we have a, a Christmas carol service on the 18th of December, which will be in the Dorpskerk, which is a beautiful service of readings and music, which is also a great service to invite visitors to, or of course, Christmas Day, which is on a Sunday uh, this year. So please uh, do invite some people, friends, family members to come along for those services. Then uh, the next notice is a notice by the Green Team, and this notice is going to be given by our Environmental Officer, Esther. Good morning, everyone. This is Esther from the Green Team, and I'm here to tell you about the Carbon Net Zero Brainstorm. You may have read about it in the weekly email. Um, we're organizing a Carbon uh, Net Zero Brainstorm to determine what St. James's uh, contribution is going to be to achieving the carbon net zero goals of the Church of England. Um, and we have four people so far who are interested. So uh, that's a great, a great thing. And we're really grateful for that. But we would really like to have more people from St. James involved because it's, it's our church's contribution. So we're looking for as many voices from the church to join us and to, to discuss um, what it is we want to do. So the idea is to have um, two or three meetings, which you can join. You, uh, the idea is to only have you join one of the meetings so you can discuss what your ideas are. And we're talking all sorts of ideas. So it's going to be from global to local to just your own household. What are the thoughts you have when you think carbon net zero? How are, how are we as St. James uh, going to help achieve that and what can we do within the church what can we do within the community what can we do within our own congregation uh, and our own homes so it's it's far and wide we're looking for all kinds of ideas and we're hoping that you can contribute so if you want to please uh, send an email to office at stjames.nl and they will forward it to me and i will be in contact with you so thanks a lot bless you good morning so thank you esther for sharing that and please do take up uh, this invitation uh, to participate. One more notice uh, before we close for today. Uh, around this, this time of year, the British School is not always available every Sunday. So next Sunday, which is going to be the 4th of December, the British School is not available, which means that our service will be in the Bondsgebouw. And the Bondsgebouw is the hall of the Roman Catholic Church on the Leidseweg in Voorschoten, where we also uh, meet over the summer. Uh, so it's important that coming Sunday, if you are coming in person, that you come to the Bondsgebouw. And the service also importantly is at 10 o'clock, not half past 10, 10 o'clock, because uh, the hall is also used for other, uh, by the church itself. So we need to meet a bit earlier. So that's the service of Holy Communion next Sunday, the 4th of December at 10 o'clock in the Bondsgebouw. And then confusingly, the following Sunday, we will, we will be back in the British school, but I will be sure to remind you of that. So the, those are all the notices for today. Uh, these are not all the notices that we have, uh, but uh, if you want to read all of them, you really should sign up for our weekly email, which you can sign up for at stjames.nl slash contact. That has all of the information on all the services, all the events, all of the activities, uh, everything that you might uh, need to stay updated. So please make sure you sign up and make sure that you read it. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and now we go over to myself, for the sermon. So today, today we have two readings. The first reading is from Romans 13, 11 to 14. Paul writes this. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. 
And the second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 to 44. Jesus says, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is the first Sunday of Advent, which is also the first Sunday of the Christian calendar. So happy new Christian year to all of us. The first Sunday of the Christian year. And Advent is a season of expectation and preparation. As the church prepares to celebrate the coming, which in Latin is Adventus, which is where Advent comes from. The coming of Christ, of course, his first coming when he came at Christmas, uh, when he was born, but even more so his final coming as judge at the end of time. I wonder how often you think about Jesus's second coming. Have you ever considered that he could return within our lifetime? The great Scots preacher Robert Murray McShane was once preaching on the coming of Christ and the judgment to follow. And he asked his elders before, uh, one by one before the service, do you think that Christ will come again tonight? And one by one they all replied, no, I don't think so. Then McShane announced his text, the Son of Man cometh at an hour that we think not. We might think that the chance of Jesus returning anytime soon after almost 2,000 years is quite slim. But if we do think that, then we are playing a risky game. Right from the beginning, Jesus and also other uh, authors in the New Testament, such as Paul, all of them urged their hearers and their readers to keep watch, to be ready, because the day of the Lord is coming soon. And when the Bible speaks about the day of the Lord, which is also called the coming of the Son of Man in this passage. It is referring to Jesus' return in glory, uh, as we say in our creeds, to judge the living and the dead. At his first coming, Jesus entered the world quietly as a baby in a manger and not many people realized it. But at his second coming, Jesus will come on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and everyone will realize it. At his first coming, Jesus came to die for the sins of the world. But at his second coming, he will come to reign in glory, to judge evil, and to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And at Advent, we remind ourselves that we need to be watchful and ready, because this coming could happen at any moment. At the beginning of this new Christian year, we are moving from the Gospel of Luke. Most of the readings of the past year have been in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, now we're moving into a year of readings from the Gospel of Matthew. And Matthew gives us one long extended Advent sermon in chapters 24 and 25. Chapter 24 starts with Jesus and his disciples. Uh, they are in Jerusalem. They have just left the temple. And Jesus tells his disciples that the temple will be destroyed. And this prophecy we know is in fact fulfilled about 40 years after Jesus made it, 
when the Romans besiege Jerusalem and they destroy the temple. So Jesus says that the temple will be destroyed and the disciples then ask Jesus, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So this is the question that introduces this extended teach teaching of Jesus on his second coming. Notice that we seem to have two different questions here. On the one hand, the question is, when will the temple be destroyed? And on the other hand, when will Jesus return at the end of the age? And if you read on, if you read the next section in Matthew 24, if you read Jesus' responses to the questions, you'll notice that it's very hard to determine when he's talking about the destruction of the temple and when he's talking about uh, his return. His answers seem to be uh, intermingled. But making the distinction whether he's talking about the one or about the other is, is not what's important in this passage. Instead, it is important, what is important is that both of these events will happen. In fact, as we said, one already happened in AD 70, the destruction of the temple. And because both of, both of these things would happen then, uh, the disciples and we, by extension, must be ready. Today's reading, our passage today starts with Jesus saying that no one knows when he will return. In fact, not even he knows despite the clarity of this statement that really no one knows, only the Father, despite that, the clarity of that statement, many people have predicted when Jesus will return. For example, Roland, Ronald, Ronald Wineland, Ronald Wineland, who is the pastor of Chur the Church of God, he previously predicted that the world would end in 2011, then 2012, then 2013. And in 2018, he predicted that Jesus would return on the 9th of June 2019. And it says prior to the date occurring, he began to express some doubts regarding his own prediction. So it seems like uh, Ronald Wineland was finally catching up to the fact that he doesn't know because the angels don't know and Jesus does know. No one knows when Jesus will return and definitely not us. Jesus goes on to compare his return to the days of Noah and the flood. You probably know the story right up to the end, just before the flood hits. Jesus says people were doing very normal things. They were eating and drinking. They were getting married. They were doing their work. There was no general sense of foreboding that something was about to happen. People were going about life as usual. If something can happen at any moment, we need to be ready for it at every moment. If something can happen at any moment, we need to be ready at every moment. For our son Ezra's birth, uh, we made sure that we were ready because we knew he could be born at any moment by having our hospital bags ready so that when the moment would be there, we, we would not have to prepare ourselves, but we would be prepared and ready uh, for his birth so we could leave at short notice. And that's the message of Advent, uh, the, the core message of Advent found here in verse 42. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. That word keep watch can also mean be on guard, be ready, stay awake. That's what our son says to, at, uh, says to us at two o'clock in the morning. He says, stay awake, be ready. He's very, he's very Advent minded. He's, he's only two and a half weeks old, but already he knows we need to stay awake, uh, which is why I'm feeling a bit tired today. But th this word, keep watch, in, in Greek it is Gregoraite, where we get uh, the name Gregory from. So if you know anyone named Gregory, that's a real Advent name. They're, they're named after this command to keep watch, to be ready, to be on guard. And after Jesus' encouragement to keep watch, what follows in the rest of Matthew 24 and 25 is five illustrations of what it means to keep watch, to be on guard and to, to stay awake. Firstly, Jesus talks about a homeowner who protects his house against a thief. So if your house has ever been burgled, you'll know that there weren't any signs to look out for. The only thing that you can do to prevent your house from being burgled is to make sure that you and your house are prepared for the moment when the thief shows up. 
So what you might do is you might get one of those uh, very sure alarms. I'm sure you've seen the adverts on TV, They're a little bit irritating because it get repeated so much. You get an alarm, you put some good locks on the door, on the windows, because for all you know, the, the thief could come when you go out to the shop. The thief could come tonight. You don't know when he'll come. So the story of the thief. Next, Jesus tells the story of a servant who is in charge of a household while his master is away. So that the servant can choose to be wise and make sure that he diligently does his work while the master is away. Or he can be foolish and neglect his work in the hope that he'll be able to quickly get it done when he hears of his master's return. But the problem, of course, is, is that he doesn't know when his master will return, so he had better be prepared. Next, Jesus tells the parable of the ten virgins, five of which neglect to bring oil with them for their lamps, and so are off doing what they should have done earlier when the bridegroom does finally arrive. And so they are excluded from the wedding banquets. So the message is that we see five people who haven't prepared and who miss out because they've left it too late. Next, Jesus tells the parable of the bags of gold about a master who entrusts, who entrusts bags of gold to his various servants while he's away. On his return, the servants who have invested the gold are commended, whereas the one who has done nothing with it except to bury it in the ground, who, who's really, he's, he hasn't done anything, th that servant is cast out. And here again, the message is that there is a time for us to get our affairs in order, to be ready when Jesus does return. And finally, the fifth illustration that Jesus uses is the image of the sheep and the goats. When Jesus returns, people will be separated into two groups. The good sheep, who have loved God, who have loved their neighbor as themselves, and the bad goats who haven't. And again, the message is that the goats have not used their time well. They haven't done with their time what they should have done. And so they miss out when Jesus returns. What do we learn from these stories? Well, firstly, that this is clearly an important teaching for Jesus because he goes to great lengths giving the same message over and over again, using different examples, uh, repeating himself, giving, giving the same message in a different way to make sure that his listeners have heard him, have understood him. And the second thing that we learn from the story is that it reminds us that now is the time for us to be right with God. Now is the time for us to prepare ourselves. Now is the time for us to do introspection, to look within ourselves, to take a careful look at our lives and see if there's any business, any business that's been left undone with God, anything that we uh, have avoided doing with him. If Jesus were to return this afternoon, and it could happen as we, as we have just seen, then would you be ready? Would you be ready for him? Or are there things that God has been nudging you to change? Is there unconfessed sin? Is there stuff from the past that you need to repent of? Things that need to change? Is the life that you are living, the kind of life that you know that God is calling you to live? Do you look... Are you more like the sheep in the story or more like the goats? Do you live to love God and to love your neighbor or, or do you live selfishly? Do you live for yourself? Is there something that you should be doing now to be ready for when Jesus returns soon? Brothers and sisters, we can't procrastinate. I love procrastinating like anyone, but we can't procrastinate. We can't think, oh, I'll deal with this at some later point. We need to make sure that we are ready now. Ready doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean that we are sinless and perfect. But it does mean that we are awake, that we're vigilant, that we've done what needs to be done. And that means that today we deal with anything about which we might later say, oh, I wish I had dealt with that sooner. Jesus is coming in glory to invite us into the wedding feast of the Lamb. So let's make sure that we are ready. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in your word we read that you are coming soon. 
And we also know, Lord, that time is relative to you, that a thousand years are like a blink of an eye to you. And so, Lord, we trust that you will come uh, again and we are looking forward to your return when you will come to reign on the earth as you do in heaven. That you will come and that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. That you will come to gather in uh, your children. We thank you, Lord, that you are have prepared, are preparing a wedding feast for us that you long to invite us in. So, Lord, we pray that we might be ready, that we might be prepared, that we might be watchful and awake, that we might be on guard, that we might take the time that we have now to prepare ourselves for your coming. Father, you know what it is, the the work that we still need to do, the things that we are avoiding doing, the things that are uncomfortable and difficult. Father, would you give us grace to deal with them so that we might be ready for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. fountain deep your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out Cries out.